Welcome to this video. My name is Phil and I'm a senior lecturer in astrophysics at the University of Lincoln. In this video, I wanted to have a look at an unusual type of galaxy known as a peculiar galaxy and what they are, why they're different from other sorts of galaxies as well. Now, if we go back to the Hubble classification system for galaxies, you have this tuning fork style diagram. And on that, we have elliptical galaxies and we have spirals. Now, spirals actually sit to the right hand side of this diagram and they actually evolve right to left. So if you look on the upper right for the spirals, you can see SC. That would actually be a younger spiral galaxy than a SA, which is towards the left. So they actually evolve from right to left. And that's true for the top spirals, which are normal spirals, but also for the barred spirals, which is the, the bottom pathway there. They do the same thing. The difference is one has a bar and one does not. Now spiral galaxies in general have gas. The younger they are, the more gas they have. And because of that, they undergo star formation. So galaxies like this will have stars forming in them still, or they will st still also have lots of young blue stars. Blue stars are quite big, they don't last very long, so if you see blue stars in the galaxy, it generally means that they're quite young. So spiral galaxies typically have lots of gas, they will be undergoing star formation, and they'll have younger, bluer stars. As a spiral galaxy ages, then obviously the gas gets depleted, the stars begin to age, so it becomes a little bit redder, but as a rule, they will have gas, younger blue stars, and also star formation. Now, the ellipticals sit on the left-hand side of this Hubble classification diagram. These are mostly classified due to their shape. So you can get more spherical ones, which will be like E0 classification, and E7 would be more like a cigar shape or very elliptical. So it's purely down to really their shape and how we actually see them, how we classify an elliptical galaxy. Now, elliptical galaxies are quite featureless. They don't have those interesting looking spiral arms like a spiral galaxy. They typically have no or little star formation occurring in them. And that is because there's no gas there to actually collapse and form stars. So if there's no gas there, you can't have stars forming. And because of all that, you find that the stars in there are generally quite old. They're old red stars, essentially, because as stars age, they're going to get redder. The younger stars, the bigger blue stars, won't be there because there's no gas to have formed them. So that's another distinction between your spirals and your ellipticals. Now, peculiar galaxies, they don't really fit nicely onto this sort of diagram here. Same as irregular galaxies. They're kind of quite similar, irregular galaxies and peculiar galaxies, and they don't really fit on this diagram nicely. And the reason for that is they can have quite a range of shapes and sizes and compositions, so they don't just fit onto it nicely. So spiral galaxies have generally a standard shape, size. They have spiral arms, they're disc-like, and as they evolve, they change ever so slightly. So the spiral arms might get more tightly wound, things like that. Elliptical galaxies also have a fairly standard shape. They are elliptical or more spherical. They don't have spiral arms and you can classify them relatively easily. So again, they have a particularly easy to classify shape, I suppose. They have a standard shape. Now, peculiar galaxies can have any sort of shape, really. And it's very difficult to give them a classification. So you couldn't just say, oh, this one's like an L shape or a C shape. It's there could be anything really. So it becomes very difficult to give them a classification to fit nicely onto that diagram there because there can be a range of shapes, sizes, compositions really, which is not quite the same as your spirals and your ellipticals. Now there are two groups of peculiar galaxies. You can have active ones and interacting ones. Now the active ones are when they actually have a supermassive black hole in their centre which is actually active and that is outputting a significant amount of energy which makes the entire galaxy very energetic so we would classify those as active. It's actually called a AGN which is an active galactic nuclei and then the second group are interacting ones so these are ones where you've got multiple galaxies either colliding with each other, emerging or they are gravitationally distorting one another through their enormous tides so again that changes their shape 
now the interacting one you've got here so these are images taken of galaxies or groups of galaxies that are in the process of actually colliding and merging or at least gravitationally distorting each other and you can see that their shape deviates away from the normal spiral shape so these are spiral galaxies here or at least they were originally and they've been distorted from that standard shape that's why they're going to not have a, a fairly standard shape anyway and as they evolve it's going to change again so as they get closer and closer and collide that distorted shape changes still again really now we know from galaxy formation that they actually form from collisions or at least one known formation mechanism or process or theory actually is that smaller spirals and dwarf galaxies will collide they make slightly bigger spiral galaxies and then they grow into the bigger spiral galaxies kind of a little bit like the milky way and bigger and over time they will actually form your elliptical galaxies so galaxy four or galaxy collisions from this sort of process is a, is a known thing so we know we're going to expect to find these and some more examples likely taken by Hubble this time actually you can see the range of different shapes there and also different colors and I mentioned at the beginning about spiral galaxies having bright blue stars quite a few of these have got a lot of bright blue regions in there that means they've actually got a sudden increase in star formations they've got lots of young blue stars and the collision of galaxies can actually drive a sudden increase in star formation so you might find these might be like starburst galaxies they've got a sudden increase in star formation now collisions are going to be common in galaxy clusters and if you zoom out from a galaxy now a galaxy is quite big but if you zoom out further than that then galaxies typically reside in clusters and super clusters that can have an enormous amount of individual galaxies in and this is one such cluster you can see here and within those clusters the galaxies have their own dynamics and they can collide with each other they can form kind of smaller groups so again galaxy collisions are somewhat common we found lots of them and we know they do occur and we know it's part of the formation process or the evolution now this second group was the active ones now here you've got a galaxy and then you've got some jets coming out perpendicular to the actual galaxy itself and what's driving that is a black hole at the center so most galaxies will have a super massive black hole at the center not all of them are active so the milky way has one right at the center but it's not particularly active at the moment but if you throw a load of material at it then that will fall onto the black hole it will then output these enormous jets and you'll also have a disk around it which will be superheated as well and that means the galaxy outputs a lot more energy than it would do normally so it becomes an active galaxy an active galactic nuclei so and again zoomed in a little bit more you can see where the arrow is pointing at the center that's where the black hole would be now we can't really see the supermassive black hole but we can see how it interacts with the material around it and there will be a disk around that and then you can see those purpley sort of jets coming perpendicular to the main plane of that galaxy so that's what one might look like and this is one of the types of peculiar galaxies that we have so if we zoomed a little bit more to a black hole that had what well, was basically active i should, should say you'll see one of these discs now that's not an image of a disc that's a artistic representation of what it might look like and we would call this an accretion disc because the active material falling onto the black hole is known as accretion and it will orbit the black hole first creating this disc as it does so it will get superheated so the disc will actually be emitting its own energy so it'll be very hot but then as it falls onto the black hole some of it gets ejected as these really powerful jets which are perpendicular to the actual disc itself and that's what we see and those jets can be considerably bigger than the actual galaxy itself so you can begin to see how one of these active galaxies is going to be outputting an enormous amount of energy compared to one that has a dormant black hole at its center now why does it become active well when galaxies merge and collide a lot of the material ends up being sent towards the black hole in the center so you get a sudden increase of material that falls onto the black hole that then can initiate it or start it to become active 
So if you see a active galactic nuclei or a galaxy that is active with these powerful jets, it most likely went through a collision or a merge at some point in its past. So this one here, or any of the ones we see with jets, it's quite possible that it has had a, that one of these merging events. Even if the galaxy looks normal, it might look like a normal spiral, but it's got these jets, it's quite possible that it's had a merging event. And it might be that the galaxy that collided with it was quite small, so it didn't gravitationally distort or destroy the main galaxy. So it left the features kind of the same, but it still sent material into the black hole to drive these powerful jets. So thank you for watching.